Hello there, Sephora's next VIB sale is just around the corner so it's a good time to recap what I picked up during their last sale. I was in the US for the August summer sale, perfect timing, so I could try a range of products I'd had my eye on with a discount. I always like to mention that these are not sale recommendations because everyone's skin, style and budget is so different. I can only share what I've personally been enjoying and given there's plenty of sale temptation heading into the holidays, it's worth pausing to think about what will actually work for you and make sure you don't spend beyond your means just because there's a discount. The holiday sale starts very soon for VIB Rouge, Friday the 1st of November so I'll leave details below with VIB and Beauty Insider dates there too. Now this is quite the haul. I always say I'm a makeup minimalist with a not so minimal collection and I love trying new products and having new things to show you. I'd been doing a low buy since the start of 2019 before this trip and I'm back to doing it now so it was seven months of saving hard and doing lots of research. Plus I don't normally get to shop during VIB sales. I don't live in the US so I got lucky last time but it's back to browsing during this sale and just enjoying what I've previously purchased. Of course I went straight for the cream blushes to start with and there were a few new launches I wanted to try. Nude Sticks is a brand you're about to see a lot more of on my channel. Australia doesn't have the full range and some of the shades always seemed a bit intense for my skin tone, but I discovered the founder Taylor Frankel's channel and was inspired to try so much more. Big brand overview coming soon, but I just included a couple here in the interest of keeping this video a reasonable length. The Nudies Bloom Dewy Color is their latest blush stick formula that's far more glowy than the usual mattes, but it's still pigmented. You don't lose out on that. Sweet Peach Peony is a lovely peachy flush for summer that you can sheer out nicely. It's very glowy, no shimmer, it just adds a sheen to your cheeks for a healthy hydrated look. Milk makeup was something I tried a lot of last year. You can find a brand overview video on my channel but this time I just had my eye on one of their most recent launches. The Glow Oil Lip and Cheek is a sheer multitasker with another very dewy finish. I really like the mini size because I feel like I'll never finish the big milk sticks. Texture is light and super sheer on the skin so it's perfect for making you look like you're just naturally flushed. Glimmer is a mauve shimmer but it's sort of got that browny red look I love and Flare is called Coral but it's quite a peachy baby pink. I wasn't sure how shimmery these would be in person but when I swatched them I found the dewy texture really wins out so they mostly look glowy instead of shimmery. I got into Bare Minerals more lately after learning more through Rosie Huntington Whiteley and Nikki DeRoost's work with the brand. Their Bounce and Blur blush launched in July, a super smooth cream to powder finish that really is quite soft and bouncy so don't press too hard. Blurred Buff is described as a bronzed rose that instantly appealed to me as a colour blocked blush bronzer eyeshadow combo and Coral Cloud is a great fresh peach to instantly perk up your complexion. Really enjoying the texture of these. I'd love to hear about your favourite bits from Bare Minerals. I finally gave the NARS liquid blush a go after spending some time with one of my favourite makeup artists and internet friends Harry Makes It Up. She said she'd been applying these a lot lately and Torrid is a favourite shade of hers. I got to swatch this while rummaging through her makeup room in LA and loved the summery warm coral finish. I'll certainly be leaving this very sheer and only need a tiny drop but you can really build up the intensity too. A few golden glowy eyeshadows to play with. I've been a fan of Giorgio Armani's eye tints for years but they changed the packaging and launched new shades this year. Again saw them on Harry Makes It Up and wanted to give them a go. Sephora doesn't have the full shade range but I chose 44 Rose Gold, a lovely shade to swipe all over the eyes with something like a simple red lip look and 27 Sunset, a Harry approved shade that's a shimmery purple pink. These set down and don't move much so you have to blend quickly after you apply them. My first Pat McGrath eyeshadow experience. I've lusted after her palettes for a long time but decided to go for her Idols singles that I knew I'd use rather than pay for a whole palette based on a couple of shades I liked. Taking points off for the wasteful packaging though, I'll be here cleaning up sequins for a week. Celestial is a shimmering champagne gold, the formula of these is lovely and smooth. Rose Venus is a pink shimmery metallic but it's actually quite a deep pink. Crimson Fire was top of my list, a buttery metallic red seen on Lily Reinhardt at the Golden Globes this year. And Burnished Honey was the only matte I chose, it's described as mahogany suede which sounds a bit Ron Burgundy, so I'm just going to call it a rich ready brown. Already having fun playing with these. A few palettes I'd had my eye on for months. Dior Backstage Amber Neutrals already popped up in my autumn makeup video. There's an eye primer, a highlight and sculpting shade, a row of shimmers and a row of mattes here. Just perfect tones for autumn or fall, nice mixture of warm shades in really smooth textures. The pint sized Huda Beauty Ruby Obsessions palette also already appeared in my Euphoria inspired makeup video, playing up the fun side of my makeup personality inspired by the hit TV show Euphoria and other makeup artists. Not the first Obsessions palette I've tried, these are great bold red and berry shades in this one and as usual some of the smoothest creamiest shimmer shadows I've tried. A bright luxury shadow quad to finish. Tom Ford is a brand that I usually can't justify the price of but the discount tipped me over the edge to pick up the eye colour quad in African Violet. I'd seen someone wearing this orange shade earlier in the year and stopped them to ask what it was. I just think this colour combination is really interesting and can actually be worn in a super subtle way so you can't detect purple or orange but it'll just make my green eyes pop. 
couple of eyeliners and mascaras. The Sephora Colourful Waterproof Eyeliner in the shade 14 It Bag is another Harry Makes It Up inspired purchase. Can you tell I love her style? This thin bronze felt tip liner is her go-to colour for something softer than black but it still goes with everything. I love how that metallic finish catches the light. Another Sephora collection product, their colourful shadow and liner crayon in the matte shade 27 red terracotta. I've been using these Sephora crayons for years and they're up there with some of my favourite shadow sticks even ahead of high-end brands. So easy to apply, just draw them on all over the lid and smudge with your fingers. Very user-friendly in a great shade range of shimmers and mattes. Clearly remember Bella Hadid's campaign for this Dior Dior Show Pump and Volume Mascara so I've wanted to try it for a long time. Harry Makes It Up got me over the line again on this one. She applied this in the video we filmed together on her channel and it gives really nice volume and definition. But this Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara, I'm seriously impressed. I only bought the mini, it's a good way to test anything out, but I'll certainly get the full size next time. So blown away by the length and really fluttery look this gives my lashes. No clumping, still looks natural, just amps them up. These lipsticks were new shade purchases in formulas I'm already a big fan of. The Bare Minerals Bare Pro Longwear Matte Lipsticks were in my last Sephora sale video and I continue to be so impressed by the intense colour payoff but non-drying feel of these. Cherry was the shade Rosie Huntington Whiteley wore in the campaign and it's the bright red I wore for most of summer. Really nice smudged out with your fingertips too. Pat McGrath's Lip Fetish Balm was a favourite find last year so I grabbed a couple more. You've seen Wild Cherry on my channel so many times. The formula is barely there and balmy with a perfect wash of colour. Blow Up is is called Warm Beige, but it's a bit of a peachy nude, which is the type of nude that suits my skin tone best. And Flesh 3 was what I really had my eye on. The shade name of this isn't Bronzed Rose, it's literally called Beautiful Bronzed Rose, and I'll give them that. A lovely, warm, ready brown that instantly makes you look put together. You've seen me mention these fresh sugar tinted lip treatments before, I'm a bit of a collector of these, and Sugar in the City is the new limited edition shade in collaboration with the YouTuber Ingrid Nielsen. The texture of these is nice and smooth, yummy sugary taste, and this blackberry is a bit more pigmented than some of the others. Real deep berry. Saved my new favourite category till last. Lip gloss was one of my gateway products when I first played with makeup many years ago, but we've come full circle and I'm obsessed again. The Dior Addict Lip Maximizer Plumping Gloss is something I've read about for years, so I wanted to give this famous minty gloss a go in their classic shade 001 Pink. I personally don't notice a plumping look or feel with this or much of a pink tint, but you do get the effect of fuller lips because that high shine really catches the light. Another taste of nude sticks with their new Nude Plumping Lip Glacé in the shade Nude Cherry. You know how much I love red lips, so a red gloss felt like a fun way to go about it. Like the tube packaging, love the big applicator. Again, it has a pepperminty taste, feels nice and balmy with some hydrating ingredients in there to help your lips look smooth. Sort of more of a raspberry to me than a true cherry red. Stay tuned for many more nude stick swatches soon. And some more Pat McGrath Labs to finish. I've tried lots of her lipstick formulas before, but suddenly realised her Lust glosses were probably pretty amazing too. That was correct. These might be the smoothest, creamiest glosses I've ever tried and I could honestly sit here all day applying them. The curved doe foot is so satisfying. Two shades that are very me. Flesh 6 is called Rich Rose Brown and it's really that great brownie red tone I love. Then Flesh 4 is deeper, called a warm mid-tone brown. Bit confusing, Flesh 4 is darker than Flesh 6, but this is a great chocolatey shade that popped up in my autumn video. It's a bit less pigmented but still tints your lips so nicely. And that shine, oh wow. Let me know what you have your eye on during this holiday bonus sale. It's a handy time to shop heading into the festive season, so so maybe you have plans to treat yourself or stash away some presents for other people. Please share what's on your wish list or what's on your just browsing fantasy wish list. That's just as much fun. Thanks for watching. See you next time.